Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs is throwing an open-air classical music concert here in the capital, Kiev. The concert is meant to honor all Ukrainians who the government believes are being illegally detained in Russia or are being held captive by Russian-backed militants in the east of the country. Among them is Nadia Savchenko, a Ukrainian fighter pilot and member of parliament. She has become a symbol of resistance to Russia. Before the concert, we spoke to her sister Vera, who told us about Nadia's health since being detained more than a year ago by Russian authorities. A few months ago, Nadia went on a more than 80-day hunger strike. Vera said, she's okay health-wise, she's a fighter. She's not used to complaining about her health, so she's okay. Her lawyers are preparing for court and are now getting familiarized with her case, which consists of 38 volumes, which are over 300 pages long. We also spoke with Ukrainian officials and human rights organizations to learn more about at least 10 more Ukrainians who were honored at the night's serenades concert. Ukraine's ambassador at large, Dmitry Kuleba, talked about the importance of raising awareness about all Ukrainian political prisoners in Russia. From this stage tonight, uh, we will uh, uh, recall 10 people, 10 names. Uh, we know about them, we try to help them, despite the reluctance of the Russian system to, in some cases, even to let us, uh, to give us ex access to them. But uh, I'm afraid we have all grounds and reasons to believe that there are more Ukrainians who are illegally kept in, uh, in Russia. Another high-profile case of a Ukrainian being imprisoned in Russia on dubious charges is Oleg Sensov, a 39-year-old Crimean activist who is facing 20 years behind bars. Amnesty International is working on the uh, Alex Sensov case and also on Alexander Kolchenko case. Both uh, those Ukrainian guys are uh, in prison now. They're in Lefortovo in pretrial detention in, in, in Moscow. And um, actually they've been uh, detained more than a year ago. And uh, immediately after their arrest, uh, Amnesty International issued uh, urgent action. It's a really specific um, action we are issuing in order to mobilize our activists and our supporters around the globe. The conductor of the night's concert was Dmitry Yablonsky, a world-renowned musician who has performed at Carnegie Hall, La Scala and the Louvre. The U.S. national whose parents fled from the Soviet Union talked about a concert he recently did in Mariupol, a government-controlled city on the front line of the fight against Russian-backed insurgents in East Ukraine. Mariupol, it was so it was so touching, especially the concert for the kids. Uh, we were in um, in a in a camp, you know, the old-fashioned kind of pioneers camp, and the hall was about 500 kids, and they were ecstatically happy, and they they deserved to have music. They deserved, you know, they shouldn't be uh, blocked from the whole world just because somebody's uh, decides politically to bomb, to sell arms, to to profit from this terrible war. <laughs> After the concert, Ukraine's foreign minister Pavlo Klimkin said that each song played under Kiev's starry sky was dedicated to the 10 Ukrainians the government believes are being detained illegally in Russia. We have 10 political prisoners. Because of that today, we heard 10 special, beautiful melodies dedicated every, everyone to one particular prisoner. And all these 10 people, they are special in the sense of being committed to Ukraine, of being committed to our fight for European values. Hundreds of the capital's residents, as well as overseas visitors and high-ranking officials, came to show their support. Since the start of the conflict in East Ukraine, more than 2,000 Ukrainians have been released from captivity or exchanged in prison swap deals. Ukraine's government, no doubt, is hoping that this concert will appeal to those who can influence the release of more prisoners of war. 
For Ukraine Today, this is Tamara Rosevan in Kiev.